video, we're going to talk about some of the upgrades that we're doing to the Custom Works Camaro. I know we've talked about, you know, the changes that we're going to do and, and you know, the car's getting kind of worn out. Um, you know, we've got a drivetrain uh, that we're going to update and this video is going to focus on what we're going to do with uh, suspension wise with the front clip. We've showed some pictures and some kind of teaser videos and some stuff and this one's going to get a little more in depth. Uh, we're almost done with it. We're really just putting the final touches on everything and uh, making sure that you know all the geometry is going to work out, no interferences or any problems and stuff like that. So what we're trying to do is get you know all the upgrades and stuff ready uh, really for the car so we can really drop the whole subframe and new drivetrain and everything that we're you know upgrading on the car in the car at one time. It's kind of minimize the downtime on the car. Plus when you take a car apart, there's just pieces everywhere and you know, with customers projects and other stuff going on in the shop, kind of limited for space. So we're going to, you know, show you in this video kind of where we're at with it and um, what exactly we've done specifically uh, to the stock subframe to accommodate 315 front tires. And, you know, our ultimate goal was obviously was to get as much turning radius. And we've actually achieved basically the, the same turning radius that the, the absolute stock, you know, front clip could achieve, which is going to be enough, you know, it's really going to work out really well for street driving and especially autocross, you know, a lot of times, you know, we have some pretty tight hairpins and if you don't have the turning radius, you know, you're kind of limited. So, and we didn't want to flare the fenders or, you know, cut the car up or anything like that. So track width is still the same. We didn't widen it or do anything different. So anyways, hope you enjoy the video and please subscribe to our channel. All right. So, you know, first off, this is a 315 tire. It's the Falcon Zenus. 615k uh, the new 660 is is apparently a little bit wider so we've built a little bit of fudge room in this thing but we literally have built it around this tire and the reason why we built it around this tire is because we've been building this for a, <laughs> quite a while so um, you know and really what we're trying to facilitate here is you know full steering angle on this thing I mean this is incredible you know and uh, you know sweep it back you know, get up here and take a look at this thing. I mean, some serious steering angle. And, you know, we've mocked it up and we've built things that, you know, kind of show, you know, we've measured the stock steering angle and, and we've really just tried to mimic it and maintain it. Um, you know, as you can see here, I mean, you can see the frame, you know, it's been, it's been sectioned, it's been notched clearance around the tire turn it up here in the front and if you look in the front this is this is full lock I mean we're, we've got and I'll show you on the other side that we've got steering stops and stuff so we can see where the you know the, the, the tires are gonna rub or hit or whatever and you know I think we're still really good the upper control arms I mean it's tight everything's super super duper tight on this you know as far as you know, the clearance, you know, it's, it's tight. And, um, so we did a three piece sway bar on the front and we actually braced it and gusted, gusseted it, as you can see here. And it's actually now kind of a structural member. Um, the sway bar is not that big. It's actually a, a solid sway bar, splined end sway bar that runs inside of a tube with Delrin bushings on it. Um, one of the cool things that we had to do for the either arm was actually <laughs> notch, <laughs> notch the support for it. But as you can see, you know, everything's, everything's really tight clearances and, and really you're, you're working with, you know, a very limited space and room. So this is the side you could probably see more. We've got our, our Viking triple adjustable Crusader shocks and those things are great. Chris over at Viking hooked us up with these things and uh, you know, great company, great people, great product for sure. And as you can see, this is, this is mocked up really at right height. We've, we've sort of built these outriggers here and we've taken all the measurements. We've actually built this table around and, and put the frame on it, you know, at right height to, to sort of mimic what it's going to be like in the car. That way we can make sure that all our clearances and all our geometry and everything's right. Um, this sway bar was really tricky. I mean, if you look at this, this sway bar link, we actually come over here, we built 
kind of little mock-ups of you know how this thing's supposed to be and it was really tough to you know to, to, to build these things and bend them and do all the stuff that we need to do and actually the sway bar in essence actually is going to mount up at an angle like this and we'll actually put probably at least two mounting points on this way bar here. Let me turn the wheel out this way. And uh, you can see that, you know, on, on the control arm, we've got multiple links because you want to keep this, this end link as vertical as, as possible. It, it just adds a lot of strength to it. Um, the more straight up and down it is. So the sway bar is actually going to mount up like this. And, and we'll be able to, to, to soften or stiffen the rate of the sway bar based on where uh, it mounts. And also with these sway bars, you can see here that it's just a, 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 you know, a, a sway bar with a splined end on it. And, and really you just unbolt the, these end links and you can slide the bar out and slide in new ones. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, we revised the complete upper mount did some cool stuff, some wonderful welding by Andrew Calkins there. And, um, you know, we actually, it's narrow or up at the top. The geometry in itself really hasn't been altered in any way. Um, so as you can see, here's the other side, what it looks like. And it's all fully gusseted in and, and, and pretty beefed up. So one of the main things that we did to get the turning radius that we needed was, was really the backside of this arm here we really needed to move it in. And so one of the things that we did was we, you can see here's, here's where it used to mount and here's where it mounts now, right? So we actually moved it basically a full mount over, um, which was nice because then we didn't have to put such severe bends in this, in this arm because when you really start to bend it, it really just wants to fold under, under a load. So we were able to keep this bend a lot more minimal and uh, by moving the pickup point in. And uh, we kind of left the other mount. There was no really any reason to necessarily cut this thing out. It, it, it adds some rigidity and structure to the frame. Um, so that works out pretty good. And you can see the bottom side of our, our arm where the coilover mounts and gusseted it in there and stuff. So, um, but you know, this was really a, a pretty, a pretty major process to do all this stuff. And, and, and really inside here, there's actually a piece of, of, I think it's two inch, two inch by two inch or inch and three quarter by inch and three quarter, 120 wall, you know, uh, square tubing that actually runs all the way through this frame here and it's welded in there. And then there's some angle that's actually welded in on this bottom side and this is 3 16 plate. So, you know, really we didn't want to make this, you know, by, by narrowing it, you know, we take a lot of the structure out of it. So we wanted to make sure that we put a lot of structure back into it. And where it really got tricky here is, is on the steering box part of it. Because if you look here, you, you have the normal frame that here, that's about two inches wide. And on the, on the passenger side, you know, this was, this side was much easier because, you know, we were able to run it straight through no problem. But, on the driver's side, um, you see the, the steering box actually cuts into the frame. And so we, were, we, were, we had to stop that piece of box tubing in here. And then we basically had to, um, I made kind of a, a, a structure on a plate, like a grid of plate that, that extends all the way about this far into the frame. Um, to, to give it more structure as well. And the biggest issue is, is because you know, you got the steering box that, that, that basically starts right at almost the weakest point. And, and so there's a lot of torque on this thing from this point, point back. And what we didn't want is, is a failure point here. As you can see, one of the, the mounting point for the steering box, it's that this is actually sleeved and completely through the frame as well as all these, there's a sleeve inside here that, that, keeps the frame from collapsing if you tighten it down or, you know, it just keeps all the structure in it. So we tried to tie everything into the frame. You can see there's a, a, a gusset back here, triangle gusset. You know, this is the drop 
mount for the sway bar, and then we ran a, a piece of tube forward. Um, and what it does is it really just ties in this this whole section here, because like again, that's you know that said that's going to be the weak point. So as you can see here, you know, getting things all all worked out and figured out, and and how things all work together. I mean, you can see, you know, there's a lot of thought and placement. You know, things get pretty critical, you know, in here when you start doing all this stuff um, to get it right. You know, we didn't, you know, we really tried to mock this up as complete as possible, you know, before we get it into the car. Because literally, we, we our goal is to get this thing powder coated, put the motor in the chassis, and then put the whole assembly in the car at one time. And, you know, really, we, we, we didn't want to run into any problems. And so we've tried to do this as complete as possible. I mean, we've got a steering shaft all mocked up in here, you know, to make sure that it was gonna clear, you know, our gusseting that we put in here. Um, we've already mocked this thing up with the headers and stuff all in it. So, you know, we've tried to really figure out any pitfalls or issues that we might run into.